This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer. Hello friends, Eric and Mathos here to give you the latest and the greatest in eSports. It's the final week of stage one of the Overwatch League and the league looks a lot more competitive than we were probably expecting to close it out. Yes, yeah, seven teams are actually available to make themselves a cool $100,000 bonus on Saturday. Currently, LA Valiant, after stomping Seoul, are sitting in third place. Seoul still got themselves a San Francisco Shock. Once they take care of business there, they're still sitting at seven and three, no problem. Or the Shock will upset them, who knows. Boston and Philly, thanks to the Valiant's victory, are all the more appealing for that third spot. They have their matches lined up. And then the battle for number one and number two seed goes to obviously London and New York. Just for anybody who doesn't know what's going on, second and third place gotta play each other and then second and third place winner, they face off against number one for that fat, fat bonus. Should be a pretty sweet Saturday if you care about some Overwatch. Yeah, plenty of great games to be checking out there and uh, the trade window's been open for a little bit. Uh, now we talked about a couple weeks ago, the week before, some of these teams that need to make some moves. One of those teams was the Shanghai Dragons and they did it, they're mm -hmm. doing it. Not only are they doing it, they got the best damn tank on the Korean ladder in Gaguri. She's an absolute demon on Zarya. And she was making waves early on in her career. People were accusing her of cheating because she was so good. She's making waves uh, by proxy, thanks to some smear campaigns by Kotaku and Polygon. You guys aren't worth the keyboards you're typing on. Nevertheless, she, along with Fearless and Otto, have been signed up to fill in the tanks and flex spots that Shanghai Dragons have been suffering with who so badly. Uh, keep in mind that the trade window is still open until the end of stage two, more shakes can come down, but for the Shanghai Dragons who actually looked relatively competitive against an obviously weak Dallas Fuel, uh, they're looking to even be better come stage two. Yeah, and Gaguri wasn't the only Lady making waves in esports. Uh, StarCraft 2 at IEM had a made some history with its winner this weekend. Just a little bit. Uh, Scarlet is your first ever women's champion. She picked up her first W, beating SOS in an absolute stomping 4 1. I don't think SOS has ever seen himself get whooped that badly ever. He went through the entire bracket 3 0 wing guys, and then he's got brick walled by Scarlet. So for the quick rundown, not only is she the first woman to ever won a StarCraft tournament ever, but she is the second only ever foreigner to win a tournament on Korean soil. It's a big deal. And with the end of IEM, we got ourselves the beginning of the Winter Olympics. Yet, we've already got ourselves some winners. Go Canada, baby. Go Canada. And, Woo. uh... You know, esports potentially making waves to make their way to the Olympics, maybe in the next, I don't know, 10 years. But uh, a big step to get there is Thompson Routers, uh, the sports wire, anything, any news you get for main sports goes through Thompson Routers, have announced that they're going to be implementing an esports wire. That's a pretty big deal. It's huge. All the old fuddy duddies of media are finally coming around to the fact that esports actually is so big and so lucrative now, potentially at least that they can't ignore it anymore. And the big news out of this whole thing is Thompson Reuters is actually gonna remove the capital E hyphen capital S sports as their way to say esports. I think for the better, we can all say that that was necessary because the Any, Anytime you see E, capital E hyphen sports, it makes me shiver, Ooh, it makes me gross. cringe. It's, it's not a choice. It's almost as bad as capital S. <laughs> Capital E and capital S, yeah. keep both. Oh, so gross. <laughs> uh, the NALCS announced that their finals, their grand finals are going to be played in Miami, but it's at a much smaller venue than we're accustomed to seeing. I mean, we've seen them play Madison Square Garden here in Toronto at the ACC, uh, but they're playing at the Fillmore Theatre in Miami, which has a capacity of just over 2,000. It's about 2,400. Uh, some people are saying this is a step back for esports. Is that, is that true? Uh, no. I mean, <laughs> we just covered the fact that Thomson Reuters actually cares about esports. All right, so that's a pretty big deal. You gotta keep in mind that in Miami, there isn't only one sport being played. These guys have stadiums backed up all the time. You're lucky that you didn't get yourself like a shoe store or some restaurant back room where they booked out a lobby for 40 people, okay? They, they waited to the last minute probably. They couldn't get the multi-billion dollar industries 
to move their selves out of their own arenas to host a small little video game called League of Legends. So take a deep breath, guys. It still should be a sweet show. For all those lucky guys who get the 2,000 tickets, hope you have yourself a great time. Should be sweet. Yeah, and if, uh, if there's not enough chairs in that uh, Fillmore Theater, you should make sure that you bring in your own DX Racer chair to uh, watch the event from there because if you use the promo code SHOTCALLERS, you get 15% off all DX Racer products. And who doesn't want to sit in this for eight hours in an arena watching games? I mean, I sit in it like practically every day Yeah. when I do this show. Yeah, don't even get up. These, these do take eight hours too. Yeah. These shows so on. Uh, that's it for the latest and greatest in esports. Eric here with Mathos. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you next week. This is the esports exclusive presented by DX Racer.